Hi, I'm Anne. And I'm Liv. And we're your Manic Stack. <laughs> Today we're talking about part three of the Earth's chakras. Every time I think about this, I think about the boulder. I don't know why, but I do. So if you guys were here for part one and part two, we've covered all of the Earth's chakras up to the heart chakra or the Anahata chakra. I feel like that's the only way that you should say it is like a Japanese, uh, Rambo. Rambo! Hey! It works. Yeah, you just gotta say it like a really angry Japanese man. Yeah, I think that's lamp in Japanese. <laughs> it's really funny because Dustin's living with us now, my uh, husband's little brother, and every time they're going up and down the stairs and they bump into each other, or like Fennel, my dog, goes into Dustin's room, you hear, Danny? <laughs> Like literally just in the house randomly between both of them. And I'm like, okay. Today, we're gonna talk about the rest of the Earth's chakras and we're gonna start with the heart chakra. So anyways, okay. So the heart chakra or the Anahata chakra is the center of love for oneself and others. It is a place of compassion, empathy, and forgiveness and the birthplace of unconditional love and joy. So where do the people of the internet believe the heart chakra of the earth exists. There's two. So the first one and the most prominent one basically is uh, Stonehenge, uh, Glastonbury and Shaftesbury. So Stonehenge and the two surrounding areas of it. One source says, or one source of people say that Stonehenge, Scotland, Glastonbury, Shaftesbury are the areas of the earth's heart chakra currently. But on the other side, one source argued that Hawaii's, I think it's Hali Akaala, Hali Akaala, Akaala, Hali Akaala volcano. I'm not Hawaiian, I'm sorry, I wish I was, it'd be really fun. The Hali Akaala volcano it is actually the Earth's heart chakra because the energy atop the volcano is said to give off the same frequency as the beating of a human heart. So, one side of the internet of people say that it's Stonehenge and the surrounding areas where no pineapples are allowed, and the other side of the internet and some people, specifically one source that I found, said that it's one of Hawaii's volcanoes. So, you be the decider. I think it's the frequency of Earth as a whole. Yeah, you know how people say the earth breathes as one? That's what I think the uh, heart chakra is. It's the frequency of the earth. Makes sense to me. And it's an ebb and flow, so it changes. Which is why a lot of people are like, the earth is sick! Because everyone's heart chakra is out of line. Or at least the, the conglomeration of the beating of the people's hearts or of the earth is a little out of tune maybe. They want me to say it's the vibration of living. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, <laughs> reasons that Stonehenge and the surroundings area are linked to being the Earth's heart chakra. The biggest one is that people seem to link the rock's mysterious formations to be what links it to the heart chakra. That's literally what I found on metaphysical websites. There was one woman that is a crystal practitioner of the highest most education and she said that she in person visited Stonehenge and the surrounding areas with her crystals and it touched her and then she tried to sell crystal infused scarves to people saying that it had the earth chakra's heart embedded in the stones. I didn't know you could be a crystal practitioner and I feel like I missed out on things. <laughs> <laughs> Adding also, to the list of things my Janelle, mother never said that I could be when I grew up. <laughs> Janelle, don't you feel like you missed out on something? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Anyways, uh, all of the metaphysical websites that I found when I typed in, why do people think that Stonehenge and the surroundings areas are the Earth's heart chakras? They all said it's linked to the mysterious attributes of the formation of Stonehenge itself. What is Stonehenge? Is it naturally occurring or did we create Stonehenge? People like to say that it's a mystery. Oh, okay. Other people like to say it was aliens. <laughs> and then scientists like to say that it was druids. Well, what do you get as a medium when you think about it? That it was druids? 
Really? Yes. They may have had the help of aliens, but I don't think so. What is a druid to you? A druid is a person between the 16th and 17th centuries that existed in Celtic land. I thought a druid was like a spellcaster. It's at D&D. Catholic school. <laughs> Catholic school D&D. <laughs> you guys we weren't allowed to play about... D&D in Catholic school? D- Are you kidding me? Really? We weren't allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh in Catholic school. We weren't allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh at summer camp because people would get really upset about trading cards. Exactly. And getting screwed over for trading cards. So. What does Stonehenge look like? Is it the circle stone things that look like square rocks? Yes. Um... Are there like taller ones and then they get shorter? I honestly don't know. I didn't pay that much attention to it. Because I can hear it. <laughs> when Does it sound like the the stones that whistle in the wind in Spongebob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they each make a different frequency and I think it's because they're different sizes. Yeah. Hmm. I need the whole picture there. Yeah, because it sounds like this, the one side is like taller than the back side. It's because they fell out. Interesting. But anyways, when I read on the internet on the metaphysical websites soliciting crystals to people and crystal scarves, and they said that the reason it's linked to the Earth's heart chakra is because of the mysterious building around the formation, or lack thereof. I was like, (coughs) So I decided to look at other reasons surrounding the formation or importance of Stonehenge in a more of a historical fashion to try and figure out if I could ascertain any reasons as to why it could be linked to the attributes or qualities linked to what's known about the heart chakra which is love, understanding, compassion of oneself and others. Anyways, self-love. Rituals in there or something? You're such a psychic medium. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they they put all those stones around there and I can see like a vortex of energy being like spun out of it. But because they like fell down, the one side is like broken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the wholeness that it did before. Yeah. Because, I mean, that was a long time ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because, like, the sound of it now is blue, but before it was uh, yellow. And if you don't know, I have synesthesia. I can hear colors. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> so, so, I put, however, scientists, because some people believe that aliens did it, scientists believe that the Celtic Druids of the 17th and 18th centuries built Stonehenge as a center for worship of the summer solstice. The summer solstice for druids is called Litha. It has been noted that the summer solstice is the only day of the year when the rising sun reaches the middle of the stones, shining on the formation's central altar. So, this got me- Right, makes so much fucking sense. Because you can see the like vortex coming out and they like keep making me feel like it needs to line up with something. Mm -hmm. The sun. it's the sun. (laughs) Because the sun has the same high pitched frequency. Yeah, there's also um, people buried under Stonehenge, and there's also cremated remains of people buried under and surrounding Stonehenge, and I tried to look up, like, spooky things about that, and I don't think there's anything spooky about it, because the metaphysical people selling crystals did not think there was anything spooky about it, but also (laughs) other people didn't seem to really get it. They're just like, there's like 150, give or take, people buried around there, but you know, it's fine. And then when I read that... The druids used it as an altar and for the summer solstice i'm like well maybe for certain reasons when people pass they were like i want them to be buried here because it's important to them it's like when you sprinkle grandma's ashes on her favorite beach same thing similar (laughs) anyways so i put this understanding that the celtic druids built it as a place to worship or honor the summer solstice or litha got me thinking about how the druid summer solstice could connect to the heart chakra, but since I do not eat enough yogurt and therefore I am not cultured enough, I reached out to our patrons on our Discord server for some enlightenment. And I asked our patron Brandy, who gave me this lovely answer of, does anybody freaking know how the summer solstice could be anywhere related or correlated to the heart chakra and its qualities at all anyway? Question mark, question, question mark. And Brandy was like, I got red hair. And I know everything about this stuff, so let me tell you. (laughs) 
And she actually told me that I think it was Sir Nunes. He gave her this answer because she works with him, I guess. Yeah. So Brandy, and I paraphrase quote, said, the summer solstice calls us to connect to the sun, which is the life force of our physical world. Connecting to the energies that begin awakening this time of year, aka the summer solstice, awakens us to bring the light into us and allow it to fro flow through everything around us, including yourself. It stirs a fire of creation and action, the summer solstice does. I absolutely feel that this energy is meant to work in conjunction with the heart chakra and the solar plexus, which is the chakra before the heart chakra, um, because of this. So it helps us to warm our centers after being in the energy of winter solstice. Litha, or the summer solstice, asks us to let go of what stillness, or the winter sol solstice, asks us to reflect upon and start bringing forth that renewed energy into our lives. Which is so fucking cute. I cried when she sent me this. I was like, Brandy, you don't understand how like I needed this, not only for my research, but also like spiritually for myself because it's a Saturday and I'm sad. So I put this idea of a point of conjecture between the end of the winter solstice, which is a time of reflection and stillness to process one's own emotions and feel a sense of belonging and self-esteem can be linked to the Manapura or sacral chakra. This gives way to the light from the longest day of the year is beautiful. So like sitting in the winter, having to reflect on all of the things that you feel is wrong around you as well as within yourself is now going to be awakened and sort of, I don't know, heated up, like warmed by the idea of now you've processed these things, let's give energy to what we can do about it and how we can help bring a sense of empowerment and love to not only ourselves but others through the new season and time of the sun. Mm -hmm. How freaking <laughs> cute is that? I was like, Brandy, why? <laughs> why? So it's, uh, I put to me, uh, Brandy could not have said it better. If you can use the stillness of the winter to reflect upon your insecurities to bring yourself a sense of purpose and power within this world, you'll be one step closer to beginning the understand, beginning to understand unconditional love of not only yourself, but others allowing you to feel acceptance and joy, which is the heart chakra. That's so cute. So maybe aside from all of the lackluster metaphysical people on the internet, this is why a large portion of people think that Stonehenge and the surrounding areas could be related to the heart chakra because if it was being used for litha and litha can be very much associated as brandy put it into the heart chakra and the chakra before it that is really beautiful made me cry not gonna cry again but i thought it was really cool now one of the other things that i read about the earth earth's chakras is that I didn't mention this in other videos, but people believe that there is a flow of energy similar to the flow of energy of your chakras on the earth. And these are called ley lines. And Stonehenge lays within or on the ley lines of the earth. Now, what are ley lines? Ley lines, it is believed that Glastonbury sits upon one of earth's many energy or energy ley lines that the heart's energy is located. So. Ley lines are straight alignments drawn between various historic structures and prominent landmarks. The idea was developed in the early 20th century Europe with ley lines, with ley line believers arguing that these alignments were recognized by ancient societies that deliberately erected structures along them. Since the 1960s, members of the Earth's Mysteries movement and other esoteric traditions have commonly believed that such ley lines demonstrate Earth's energies and serve as a guide for alien spacecraft. Archaeologists and scientists regard ley lines as an example of pseudo-archaeology and pseudoscience. So, there's three things you can believe. That the mysterious occurrence that cannot be explained is the reason the heart chakra and Stonehenge are a thing. Another one is that Litha, which was believed to be by scientists the 
summer solstice celebration of the druids was used for Stonehenge and if you are of that belief system that can be related to the heart chakra which I'm going to talk about and be okay with or you can think it lays on ley lines which is where all of the things of aliens are which is fine too so do they think every one of the chakras are relating to aliens it could be argued as such why because what do aliens have anything to do with earth well i think i went on a rant in the last one or the first one where lemurians are not aliens but were visited by aliens which is why their societies are so much more advanced why do than they ours look different <laughs> i don't know if you want so many people want us to talk about aliens please you do not want me to talk about aliens we're gonna lose so many friends why? Because people are gonna like what I have to say. I don't think I can That's be serious. That's the point. I don't Controversial think I can be topics do well on YouTube. <laughs> I could not be serious and lots of people would hurt her. I would hurt feelings and they would hurt my feelings and that's not what I want to do. Controversial topics do well Although I didn't think that Bigfoot was an interdimensional being, but if you yeah, watch Yeah, we literally Bigfoot just made fun of the plural version of Bigfoot the whole time. Yeah, but that video- And then we talked to a Bigfoot. <laughs> will eventually come out and I'm, you know, I'm okay with saying that I'm wrong. So if I'm wrong Bigfoot. about aliens, I will say that I'm wrong. But right now- Wrong I about not, what? I don't know. I'm just you know they exist. Future, you just don't want to talk evidence. to them. But do I think they erected Stonehenge? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. <sighs> I think we should do aliens. It could also be, be like time travel or parallel universes. <laughs> the Earth's heart chakra could also be Hawaii's Halaikiala volcano as well because it emits the same frequencies of the Earth chakra. However, Em and I also believe that it is the frequency at which life exists on Earth. Mm -hmm. So, because that's what they show me. They make me feel the vibration that goes through existence. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to attribute the Earth's heart chakra to one of these frequencies of existence, great. But Em and I want to talk about all of them because no, it, it makes is more sense. All of them. <laughs> it makes more sense to us. But I really liked the Celtic Druid thing with Lotha. It was really cute. <laughs> it's moving on. It's moving on. <laughs> Now we got the throat chakra. Me, me, me. Okay, so I've been watching um, One Piece and there's this big dude that has like old style hair and he's from uh, the one like Middle Eastern place on. Uh, I've never watched One Piece. Really? It's too long. I had a horrible dream about it last night. Okay, well, it wasn't horrible, but it was very Is weird. Is Brad watching One Piece now? <clears throat> He doesn't want to watch it with me, but exactly, I am watching you watch it. Exactly, because he watched Naruto. Once you watch one of those huge anime series, you're like, I can't do another one. Riley didn't even watch all of Naruto, though. He just exact watched no compilations one of fight scenes There's over 500 episodes. YouTube. But anyways, there's this guy. I can't remember the, the place's name, but it's modeled after like the Middle East, basically. And he has big, giant wigs. I'll have to find his name. But he goes, ma, ma, ma before he talks because every person in one piece has have to have like a weird thing that they do. So the throat chakra makes me think about this guy where he goes ma 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 before he talks. So anyways, the throat chakra of the earth is considered by lots of people on the internet to be again, three places. <laughs> so the great pyramid of Giza, which is in Egypt, the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem and Mount Sinai or Sinai in Egypt. So. The throat chakra, also known as the Vishudu chakra, Vishud, Vishuda, Vishnu? No, oh, that's Vish very Vishnu. different. It's Vishuda. V i s h u d d h ha. Vishuda chakra. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> is responsible for speaking our truths, self-expression, and communication. What do you think it is? Actually, the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. What it actually does, or where it actually is what it actually is on earth i don't think that it's just sound i think it's expression of things is it wind uh i think it's more than that i think it has to do with not only earth's physicality but kind of like so we just got done recording top parallel no time travel and time travel deals with light and how you perceive things basically like okay. relativity I think it has to do with light as well 
It's like the expression of Earth itself through different ways. It's a lot more abstract. <laughs> well, yeah, because now we're getting into the blues and purples of the rainbow, which are spiritual. Mm -hmm. But they show me it's like wind because you can hear the voices going through wind and you can hear the experiences going through wind. It's like wind replays things and you're getting the same thing with light. I'm also very clairsentient, so I think it's more of a clairsentient feeling. It's like all of the chakras of the earth before, so I know we talk about them being like inside the earth. The sound or expression of the frequency of earth. I feel like it's all of those things together and how you perceive them. Yeah, they tell me it's wind. That's the easiest way to explain it to someone. Mm. And wind in the similar sense of how I can hear it clairaudiently. It remembers things that happens on earth and blows it through existence. You're welcome. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about the Pyramid of Giza. Giza, Giza, I think it's Giza. The Pyramid of Giza, mostly, because the other ones honestly just weren't my jam, and I feel like they're easier to explain without thinking about. Is but the if you pyramid want- pyramid an actual, like, Egyptian pyramid? Mm -hmm. It's like the ones you know about, like the one Louis Armstrong Are there in. mirrors in them? Yes it captures what we're talking about in it. Sorry. <laughs> Interesting. Cause they're like pyramids, they're like weird spiritual things and that's why the Egyptians like made pyramids or whatever in the way that they, that they did. But um, there's this, I think they're a god that's telling me that. Mm. But they're like the, it's like the center point, like the radio head mm -hmm. of the throat chakra. Makes sense. <laughs> I, like, okay. I like your thoughts. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the Pyramid of Giza was built over 4,000 years ago, and it is believed that the pyramids were built as religious temples used to serve both the gods and as tombs for burial of their pharaohs. The Egyptians believed that there was life after death, and that death was merely the way of traveling to the afterlife and you could take your possessions with you to said afterlife. I find this one to be more self-explanatory than the uh, last chakra. I feel, that the cho I feel that the throat chakra is a very human chakra. Others note that the location of the earth's chakra is not only man-made, but biblical as well. They're, they're saying it's not based upon humans, but humans use it to create ego. Humans use physicality only to create ego but they express it mm -hmm. in the throat chakra. Yeah. Is what I'm talking about. The throat chakra is the expression of your ego. But it doesn't have to be. lack of ego, correct. <laughs> it's just the expression of yourself. The Great Pyramids are amongst ley lines, if that has anything to do with it, as I suppose the ley lines are the flow of energy from one chakra to the next in occult thought, but they are past physical expressions of human thought and being during a certain time and place in history. Whereas the Mount of Olives of Jerusalem and the Mount Sinai of Egypt both have biblical context and important, I assume in speaking one's religion, one's religious and spiritual truths. They're all figureheads for the throat chakra. Yes, exactly. Because the throat chakra isn't a physical thing. Yes, because it can be expressions of whoever you are, whether that be through speaking your truth, ma, 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 or dancing, creating things. Anything that expresses who you are to who you are <laughs> expresses who you are to the world around you. So these three things were used to express to others who entire nations of people were to others. Throat chakra. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We also have the third eye chakra. You ready? Third eye chakra. This is the one that has no fixed location for it. During this eon, and eons, I guess, are aeons. I don't know, it's A-E-O-N, just eon, eon. Happens every 2,160 years. It's also said to be currently in Stonehenge where the Anahata Chakra is permanently located. I really like that they said that. 
While this will change in centuries, the alignment is according to the new age, usually corresponding with another chakra's location. So it's just gonna bing bong from one chakra that's permanently somewhere in the next 2,000-ish years or whenever the last time the Aeon changed. What does the third chakra mean? The third chakra? Sorry, the third eye chakra. It's like ascension into the spiritual being, knowing of things, I don't know. We should know. Watch our chakra video. I talk about <laughs> it's it. It's our second video, so I don't remember. Second video. Because they're telling me the third eye chakra would be like the atmosphere because it's the transition from the here to the there. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. The ether. Yeah. Because they're like, we're getting into the uh, chakras that are not a physical thing on earth. Mm -hmm. We're in earth. Mm -hmm. It moves outward. Just like everything. Because <laughs> the crown chakra is on the outside layer of that. Mm hmm So, you're welcome. The crown chakra is Mount Kailash, or Kailash, in the Himalayas, also known as the stairway to heaven. The crown chakra, or Sarasara, can be found on Mount Kailash. The Himalayas have long been believed to hold their own powers, and for some, it is not just to do their, it is not just due to their humbling nature, as they tower over the rest of the earth. This chakra is associated with knowledge and wisdom, as well as universal consciousness. They should have just made it one of those staircases in the middle of a forest that go to nowhere. <laughs> that would actually be way better. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to say right now. That's one of my dreams is to jump off of one of those because people think that you go to hell, which is interesting. Because it's weird. We should find one that goes into the ground. Then I would believe it. That it goes into hell? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I just want to jump off of one of them and go parkour. And break your legs. What if I'm wearing moon boots? I think you would still break your legs, but it'd be way worse. You don't know that. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, Mount Kailash in Tibetan means precious jewel of snow, and it is a sacred mountain for many cultures, such as the Buddhists, Hindus, Jains, and Zoroastrians. Both Tibetans and Hindus believe that they should make at least one voyage or pilgrimage to the top of the mountain in their lives. For Hindus, the mountain is the abode of Shiva. For Tibetans, it is the center of the universe and monks and lamas are buried there. I'm a lama. The very strenuous pilgrimage to the top of the mountain is considered a metaphor for the journey through suffering to redemption and is therefore the reason it is Mount Kalash associated with the crown chakra. Dun dun. Was that it? Are we going to the crown chakra now? Or that are you is saving that the, for the next one? No, that is the crown chakra. Oh, we're doing the crown chakra now? Yeah, that was the crown chakra. Oh, the I Himalayas. talking about the third eye chakra. No, the crown chakra. The The third eye chakra is not a fixed location. The chakra. Yeah, it's in Stonehenge mm -hmm. for the next couple thousand years. Interesting. And then the Himalayas or Mount Kalash in the Himalayas is the crown chakra because it is the tippy top of the world. That's where your crown chakra is. This Mount is Everest. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Hollow <laughs> earth. Hollow <laughs> earth. Do you guys like this content? If you do, tell us what we should do next. And you should also maybe hit that subscribe button and the little bell because it will tell you when we release another video. Okay, bye. We are your mother, so thanks. If you want to get in on a... Uh, the uh, metaphysical dad jokes join the discord server and become a patron you can figure out how to do so in the description below and be friends with all of these lovely people and talk about hot dogger